When setting up your workspace for dissection, safety is a major concern. I'm going to cover the basic tools and different techniques you can use to ensure safety to complete a successful dissection. Before you even get to the specimen, you might see a variation in the following tools. A blunt probe, which helps lift organs, hold something out of the way, or probe something if you don't mind damaging what you're inspecting. Forceps, often referred as tweezers, assist with holding or moving tissue out of the way. You now need to squeeze very hard to hold something. Sometimes these might be narrow, sometimes curved, or have grooves or teeth, but they're commonly used tools to inspect the body cavity. Teasing needles, and I have a straight tip or a curved bent one, these are what they sound like. They're meant to simply tease tissue. You do not need to use much force. T-pins assist with holding down the specimen, muscle, and skin flaps. Scissors assist with cutting the outside skin, tough tissue, and sometimes bone. You might see scissors with a blunt end, a curved end, or a straight and sharp end, which are more commonly used. And then the last tool is one of the main ones you'll be using during dissection and used for precise cutting, which is the scalpel. I have two different types of scalpels. There is a scalpel with a removable blade and a scalpel that is one entire piece. One of the most common questions we receive is about the removable scalpel. How do I safely add and or remove a blade? To do this, you need a tool with a good grip, ideally like a hemostatic forceps because they can lock onto the blade, but more than likely you have a forceps or pliers and those work too. To demonstrate, I'm using a scalpel handle number four with a number 22 scalpel blade. To add a blade safely, simply open up the package. You can simply attach your forceps or pliers to the back of the blade. Then slide the handle into the middle of the blade onto the groove and it will simply lock into place. Now, if you need to remove a blade, this is where you need to take precaution. What you do is hold the handle perpendicular to your body and make sure your thumb is close to the bottom of the blade. Then, use your forceps and pliers to grab the bottom of the blade and slightly bend it up until it is above the middle part. Simply lift up slightly and use your thumb to push off the blade. You do not want to bend the blade more than needed because this will cause friction against the groove of the handle and will make it harder to slide off. This is a safe technique because it requires minimal effort. If you try pulling the blade off, you can overextend your arm and then accidentally hurt someone near you, and that is what we're trying to avoid. To hold a scalpel using a number 22 blade, you want to use an overhand grip, giving you more support to cut through tougher tissue like fascia. If you're trying to do a more precise incision, like with a number 10 blade, you would use a pencil grip, using the scalpel as an extension of your finger. Whenever you are passing this tool, you want to hold the flat edge of the blade to your hand with the handle extended out. And then when dissecting, you do not want to cut downward too hard into the specimen. If you see or start cutting into the specimen like a steak, you're probably using the wrong tool. Use the scissors or a different tool. You also do not want to make multiple shortcuts. It should be precise and long. If you start chopping, we refer to this technique as hacking. Let the blade do the work. You should find little resistance with the number 22 scalpel with cutting into tissue, organs, or muscle. So that is your quick tutorial on using basic tools and techniques for a safe dissection in the classroom. If you do have any additional questions, you can email or call our customer care department or go to our website for more information.